Hey everyone, this is Matthew Stillman from StillmanSays.com, and I am here with another episode of Improvised Insights with an interesting person. And today's interesting person is a really interesting person. Her name is Vina Rompal, and she is a passion coach, an erotic, uh, erotic and sex coach, romance coach in the UK. And here she is, Vina. Say hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. So she's a brilliant and insightful person who, if you want to talk to her about sex, relationships, romance, uh, bringing the erotic energy in your life. And normally you could have a great conversation with her about that, but we're not going to be talking about that today. Isn't that right, Vina? That's right. Well, because, I'm sure I can find a way to get onto that topic. Well, that will be interesting to see how we get there from someplace that's not so direct. Who knows where we're going to end up. So um, are you ready for the suggestion today? I'm ready. The one word suggestion from Twitter is the word cliff. Oh, brilliant. First of all, can I just say how much I love that the suggestion comes from Twitter? Because yes, I, Twitter, Twitter for me is sacred space. So, brilliant. Okay, Cliff. Um, should, I, should I just tell you? I've got lots going through my mind already. Absolutely. Just start going. I'm going to ask you questions okay. about that, whatever, wherever you start. Okay, so Cliff for me is about risk and it's about being um, on the edge. I mean, actually, I think from a philosophical point of view, a cliff is a very significant symbol um, because I was stepping off the cliff. <laughs> I, always, I always want to step off the cliff. I want to know what happens. I want to know whether I'm going to fly or whether I'm going to crash. Absolutely. I just have a quick, quick question. What does your cliff look like when you imagine that cliff? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it's, um, it's chalky. It's, it's uh, very, very high. There's a... I can see my feet and sort of below my feet it just it's sort of pure white kind of chalky rock um, that, and there's a very very blue sky and blazing sun beautiful mm -hmm. all right go on keep, keep telling us more oh okay um, and so I'm barefooted and um, I want to st I want to step off I want to see what happens and I can kind of feel I'm really aware of the air around me and it feels like uh, I'm, I'm, that if I step off I'm just going to Step onto the air. That sounds um, great. So I, I'm going to go back to to your your um your philosophy your philosophy about cliffs and not so much for the description. I just was interested just to, to hear what you have to say. Okay. Keep going. Keep uh, going. You, well, you were you were saying about how it means risk to you. And right, 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 right. Well, because I think that I think that um, you know, in some ways, generally, I like to live. In, in the sense of not stepping out of my comfort zone, this is really this is a really interesting point because I know that something that we hear a lot is that the fun is outside of your comfort zone, right? And that that if you want to live an interesting life, you should step out of your comfort zone. Actually, for me, I always remain right in the middle of my comfort zone, preferably kind of lounging in a hammock, um, because that, I think that's where the fun is. I don't think there is any sense in discomfort. I find no sense in discomfort actually. Right. Uh, at the same time, so as part of that, the metaphor of the cliff um, is is about risk and is about stepping into the unknown. So, and and that that does speak to how I approach life, which is from that place of complete comfort. How do you then step into the unknown? Because that's when I think it's always safe. <laughs> um, that's when I think it's always genuinely fun um, and interesting, rather than foolish. Um, and, and potentially dangerous, I guess. So the risk, the risk for me, um, always needs to feel good, and it needs to feel like fun. If it's not fun, I'm not interested. That that that's how I would approach pretty much anything. So it's it's interesting to me that um, that you want risk to feel fun because so often the the word risk is associated with danger and fear. Um, right. So in your mind. I mean, tell us about your own transformation because there must have been a point where risk felt terrifying. So, oh, what, how did that inch across your psyche from risk is a terrifying place to be to risk is an interesting, pleasurable place to be? Right, right, right. Well, yes. I mean, I certainly had experience of take of risk taking that that did feel pretty scary and. Um, 
risky in the in the normal sense. Um, and it's fine, you know, you can do that. I, I did it, but it's I found it kind of exhausting more than anything. Um, and, and I also think there's something about almost getting addicted to the adrenaline rush of being in a space that feels like so close to the the edge, so close to the fact that actually you could just crash. Um, and then, of course, you know something happens and you fly. But it takes a lot of will. I found it took a lot of willpower and it took a lot of energy. Um, and at some point, I decided a couple of years ago, actually, I just decided, you know what, I'm not going to do this, do it this way anymore. I just, I'm not interested in that anymore. I've kind of, I've been there, done that, and it was, it was fine because, um, you know, I had some interesting experiences. Um, but I don't feel like I need to do that anymore because I'm. I don't want to. You know what it really is about for me. It's about managing my energy. So I don't see why I need to uh, to drain myself in order to live an interesting life. That's sure. what it comes down to. So so for me now I can absolutely say that I arrange my life around pleasure, and, and that's why it needs to be fun. I'll I'll take that uh, any day. So. Um, <laughs> That still leaves me with the so that still leaves me with the question of how did you sense that the next stage was possible? Because it's very easy to say, well, I want to build my life around pleasure, and, and now I do it. Mm -hmm. But you still start with the fact that risk is dangerous. Risk mm -hmm. is so. What? How did you sense that it took energy to take those risks? Which it would be interesting to hear one of those risks were. Obviously, there might be millions of them or hundreds of them. Mm -hmm. but, how did you sense into what was going on in your life to connect to the fact that it took a lot of energy to build those risks as opposed to something else in your life, like you know, walking, having too long a commute to work? That could be just as exhausting, uh, sure. maybe not risky in the jumping off a cliff way or going to some you know wackadoo party or something yeah. else. But yeah, um, what, well, I guess what I noticed was that it, it was about discomfort, and it was it was that. So when I was doing um, risk the the usual way, the kind of risky, dangerous way, if you like, yes. Um, yes, yes, I was having some fun and excitement, and I and I was ex, you know I was kind of pushing some of my own boundaries, um, but there was always a ping back in a negative sense. So there's always either a loss of energy, a feeling of being tired, or actually a feeling of discomfort, and a sense of I'm not being completely comfortable in my own skin. Right. I, can't, I can't bear, I just, it just got to the point where I thought, no, actually, that's not what I want to, to do anymore. Um, so the way that I do it now is to wait until the stepping off the cliff feels like just the next obvious easy step to take. So in other words, it doesn't feel like take a deep breath and step into this, it feels like I'm not even paying attention, you know, it's, it's to my breathing, it's just, it's so easy that the taking the next step feels like stepping onto, I don't know, a, a path covered in soft moss or primroses or something, so it just feels really easy. So it's a downward slope, it's not really just a plummet. Right, exactly. Right, so exactly. All, the weight, all the weight in the wind is behind you. Exactly, and so even if it is something completely unknown, um, I, I wait basically until it feels like the next easy step just to shimmy into. Yeah. I'll take that. So that's really interesting that you essentially set your own mental space up to make the next step feel like it, it has to be comfortable. This, this runs counter to a lot of the um, current language that you hear around this that you need to sort of live on the edge mm -hmm. and play big and mm -hmm. make bold choices and you're actually sort of saying to I mean while you may make a bold choice the bold choice may actually to take very small choices which runs counter to the common sound but that's mm -hmm. pretty hip to say I'm not I'm gonna find the smallest most comfortable step Right, exactly, and and that's really you know having done it the other way a lot, having done the big goals and the bold steps and the whatever, um, I think it actually pulls you out of yourself. I'm very interested in selfhood, so actually, so even when I'm talking about um, romance and sex and erotic experience, ultimately for me it's it's about selfhood and and how do 
I share myself with you? How do we share ourselves with, with each other? And I find with the, with the boldness and the big steps, um, that actually really pulls me out of myself. It pulled me out of myself to, to an extent when I lived that way. And I, don't, I just don't think that's a smart way to live. Um, I think that, so, so actually waiting until, until the next step feels obvious and easy means that you're truly living from yourself because that's the ir I think the irony is that with with all of those kind of approaches that say you know take the bold step take the big step those are, are, are supposed supposedly they're supposed to bring you more fulfillment and you know living on purpose and doing all, all of that kind of stuff and actually you can I don't think you can be fulfilled if you're pulling yourself out of yourself the whole time you need to stay in your own skin and that's, yeah. this, this connects to your earlier point about being comfortable in your own skin because you it could be easy it could make the case that if you are not making big bold steps then you are being yourself um, <laughs> but that isn't a guarantee either you sort of right. you need to enter into that realm of comfort where you are comfortable in yourself that you can play small and in that way you're playing only as small as you are. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you consider yourself small, then you are playing small. If you consider yourself infinite, then you're playing yourself infinite. Sure. I would say there's a difference between lazy and comfortable, right? Say, say more. I would agree, but say, say more yeah. about that. Right. So I, I think that you know the, the idea that if you're if you're kind of playing small, then you're not then you're doing yourself a disservice. Is is basically saying don't you know don't don't check out, don't be lazy, don't don't go into apathy. Um, and don't, and also I would say don't go into, it's, it's a thing about don't go into unconscious habit because when you're in unconscious habit that's when I guess you're not, you're not paying attention to, to really notice what, what it is that you want and what it is that's going to, to best serve you and those around you. Um, so, so that's one thing and that, that I would say if you want to live an interesting life, don't be lazy. Um, but comfort is a very, very different thing. And it's, you know one thing that I've noticed in talking to people a lot of you know the people all over the world is that people are much more comfortable or they find it easier to talk about pain than pleasure pleasure actually is very disruptive yeah <laughs> right Absolutely. so um, so the whole idea of of staying in your comfort zone and making life about pleasure and only taking steps that feel good is in fact a very disruptive idea um, so that's what I and the, and the thing about that is that it takes great attention to live that way. It really takes a lot of attention to live that way successfully because otherwise you can easily slip into um, into laziness. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, what would you, your? I mean, I fucking hate checklists, but what would you say to look out for when you are on that? that barrier space, that liminal space between lazy and comfort. You mean how, uh, uh, oh I see, what, how to tell the difference? Yeah, I mean if, if, you were, if you were any person, if you were telling someone how to keep an eye out for when you're in that, on one space or the other. Okay, right. Mm -hmm. So I always say pay attention to your body because the body doesn't lie. So that's, a, and that's a skill, knowing how to read your body's sign, signals and signature moves, as it were, signature states. Um, if you're feeling, okay, I'm going to speak for myself because I also think that each body works differently. But if there's, you know, if there's a sense of actual physical heaviness or apathy or sleep, overly sleepy, being overly sleepy or wanting to just go into um, habitual patterns of movement with the body, whether that's around food or around sleep or wh whatever it is, that is not a state of comfort, that's a state of, that's the going into the laziness part. Yeah. When the body feels at ease but alive and vibrant and vital, then you are more, much more likely to be in the space of comfort and uh, awareness, So that sort of conscious comfortableness if you like. I'll take it. So I will, listen, I always, my body's my baseline. I just, that's what I pay attention to and that's what I listen to. And then do you, even you, Vina Rampal, the passion coach, do you find yourself slipping into laziness? I mean, do you then have to sort of 
reconnect, reset? I'm always reconnecting and resetting because you know you know what, and the, I I found I'd, I'd be interested to know what you have found about this in your own practice, but I've found that recently the more attention I pay, the more I notice that you know almost from minute to minute, it becomes a, a question of well where is my attention now? How how connected am I being right now in this moment? So actually it becomes. I've found it doesn't. It's not like it suddenly, you know, I'm connected and then I'm 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 good for days or weeks. It actually becomes a much more minute work. Um, so yeah, it feels like it's actually more complex now, or more. The complex isn't the right word. It's more. Um, it's more infinitesimal. You know, it's more. It's more about the 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 minutiae and more about the the detail and the each breath and the minute by minute. Yes, I, I was going to, when you asked me about my experience, it, it's very much the same in the sense that, you know, if you're first told to clean a room, it's easy to say, okay, let's get this stuff on the hangers and let's, you know, quickly sweep the floor and it's clean. Mm -hmm. But then once you've cleaned rooms for a while or years, you start to find out, ah, there's actually places I don't normally look to clean right. the room, which add to the cleanliness of the room with, without even necessarily visually being clean. And so, again, I've walked into rooms that looked clean, that didn't, that didn't actually feel clean. Right. No one had actually cleaned the tops of the doors yet. Or, exactly. And so that's what I find with my own work between looking at comfort versus pleasure, or comfort, versus, um, comfort and pleasure versus laziness, mm -hmm. is that I constantly find little degrees and little spaces where there's been laziness which I didn't even realize you could be lazy there. Exactly, that's exactly, I, w I, would, I would concur exactly with that. It's, it's, the, it's like you know you, you take the light into the corners of the room so suddenly you're seeing the little bits of dust that like you say you didn't even know were there. Yeah. So, I, you know, so I had an experience recently, or I've been having an experience recently where I'm becoming very conscious of um, the individual words in a sentence. So, particularly in romantic relationship, um, I'm I've become really conscious in the last few weeks about what when have I said a sentence that just was slightly off? You know, that, that just was slightly um, I don't know, either a little bit tense or a little bit fearful or a little bit unconscious, and and not exactly fully as loving as I would have wanted it to be. Um, but th those are, you know, it, it might be just a little phrasing here or one word there or just a, 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 the, the tone was slightly off. And I'm now noticing that, um, whereas, you know, a year ago I wouldn't have noticed in that level of detail. Yes. Well, this is so, the, the work of re replacing something coarser with something as fine as you can have your attention to it. Right. Exactly. And I think and attention, I think, is the key word because I, I would say that the finer the attention becomes, then that's really what determines the um, the fineness of the fabric, if you like, of what your of what your experience is, right? Beautiful. Yes, this is exactly it. Mm. Well, Vina, who knows? We, who knew that we were going to end up talking about this, starting from Cliff? <laughs> Excellent. I love Twitter. Yes, Twitter is the best. Twitter's made my life better in so many ways. <laughs> so, uh, Vina, people can find you at uh, vinarabhal.com. Yes, that's right. And I beg and pray you read her tweets and read what she writes. It's beautiful. And if you have an opportunity, have a session with her. She's great. Um, so, Vina, thank you so much. Thank you. That was really good fun. I loved it. Really good fun. So, um, this will be up soon. And... I'll tell you all about it. Thanks so much, guys. Go to stillmansays.com and meetarumpol.com and see you next time.